I have an iPhone. And if I move from here and go over there and sit with my Democrat friends, which will make them real nervous, does Google track my movement? Does Google, through this phone, know that I have moved here and moved over to the left? It's either yes or no. Uh, not by default. There may be a Google service which you've opted into use, uh, and if so, Google knows that I am moving over there. It's it's not a trick question. You know, you make a hundred million dollars a year. You ought to be able to answer that question. Does Google know through this phone that I am moving over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson, which would make him real nervous? It's his question. I, it's yes or no. I wouldn't be able to answer without looking at. Uh, you can't say yes or no. Uh, without knowing more details, sir. If I walk over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson and carry my phone, does Google know that I was sitting here and then I moved over there? You're welcome anytime, Judge. <laughs> yes uh, or no? I genuinely don't know without knowing well, I'm what I'm shocked you is. don't know. Um, I, I think Google obviously does. Ah, the classic answer the question, yes or no a staple of any congressional hearing, this time with an iPhone. Often a member of Congress throws in, I'm running out of time, perhaps after they've made a lengthy statement. Except on December 11, 2018, when Representative Ted Poe, Republican of Texas, demanded a yes or no from Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google. He wasn't running out of time at all. It was just the beginning of his questions in the tech hearing, not at the end which demonstrates that demanding a yes or no answer can happen at any time. Hey, we're running out of time for these introductory sentences. In this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly, are we playing some of the most remarkable yes or no moments in congressional hearings? Yes or no? The answer, yes. Congressional hearings have several purposes. One is to provide oversight for federal agencies. Here's an example. Well, it's our understanding that at least one briefing occurred in December before your decision not to recuse yourself on December 19th and Christmas Day. Is that correct? Uh, what's the basis for that question, sir? Yes or no. Is it well, correct? I, I, I mean, I, I... It is our understanding that one, at least one briefing occurred between, Dece between your decision not to recuse yourself on December 19th and six days later, Christmas Day. Is that correct? Simple enough question. Yes or no? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, again, what is the basis for your question? You're saying that it is your... Sure, I'm, a, I'm asking the questions. I only have five minutes. So please answer yes or no. No, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm going to... I, I, I don't, I, I, you were asking me a question. It is your understanding. Can you tell me where you get the basis? No, I'm not going to tell you that. I don't have time to get into that. That was an exchange between New York Democratic Congressman Jerry Nadler, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, and President Trump's acting attorney general, Matthew Whitaker. February 8th, 2019... An oversight hearing focusing on the Justice Department's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Here's another exchange from that same hearing. Matthew Whitaker and Texas Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Prior to the firing of former Attorney General Jeff Sessions, did you discuss or share your private opinions of the special counsel investigation with the chief of staff, Trump family members and others? Yes or no? Uh, as I previously answered, Yes or no, sir? As I previously answered, Congresswoman, I have not discussed... Yes or no? As I previously answered, Congresswoman, I have not discussed... And since you were appointed counsel. acting attorney general, did you discuss or share your private opinions with the special counsel? Again, the special counsel's investigation is an ongoing investigation, and I, don't, I have nothing more to say than what I've already said. So you are denying reports that you shared many one-on-one -on -one calls with President Trump and his then chief of staff, John Kelly, when Jeff Sessions was still attorney general? Again, Congressman, is there someone that provides you the basis for that question, or is that an anonymously sourced I am asking article? the question, sir. Answer the question, yes or no. Could you repeat the question, please? So you are denying the reports that you shared many one-on-one -on -one calls with President Trump and then his chief of staff, John Kelly? Are you denying that, yes or no? Congresswoman, as I've mentioned several times today in my opening statement and otherwise, yes or no. I'm not talking about the conversations that I've had with the President of the United States or his senior staff. Um, so that is a no? I don't think you can assume anything from that. Here's one from a Senate hearing. A yes or no question from Senator Roger Marshall, Republican from Kansas, at a January 11, 2022 COVID hearing that expanded into a heated exchange with Dr. Anthony Fauci. 
as the highest paid employee in the entire federal government, yes or no, would you be willing to submit to Congress and the public a financial disclosure that includes your past and current investments? After all, your colleague, Dr. Walensky, and every member of Congress submits a financial disclosure that includes their investments. I don't understand why you're asking me that question. My financial disclosure is public knowledge and has been so for the last 37 years or so, 35 years well, that the, I've been directing. The big tech giants are doing an incredible job of keeping it from being public. Uh, we'll continue to, what, to look for it. Where would we find it? All you have to do is ask for it. <laughs> I, I, you're so misinformed, it's extraordinary. Well, why am I, why am I misinformed? This is a huge issue. Wouldn't you agree with me that, that you, have a, you see things before members of Congress would see what? them so that there's a, an air of appearance that, that maybe some shenanigans are going on? You know, I don't think that's, I assume that that's Senator, not the case. What I are you talking it's about? It's not the case. My, but, my financial disclosures are public knowledge and have been so, you are getting amazingly wrong information. Another oversight hearing, April 28, 2022. The House Judiciary Committee is hearing from Biden Administration Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Here's Texas Republican Representative Chip Roy. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, there have been over one million plus individuals put into proceedings or released into the United States on your watch. I've asked multiple Border Patrol personnel, not the union, mind you, if we double, triple, quadruple the CBP budget, would that one million release go down? And they categorically said no, it would go up. Do you agree, yes or no? I'm not sure I understand your question, Congressman. With the addition... With the number of people being released in the United States under current law, would it go down no matter how much you increased your budget? Um, uh, and it would not. As they said, do you agree, yes or no? Congressman, if I understand your question correctly, when individuals are in the United States and they make a claim right. for asylum... So the number would not go down, is the answer, right? Yes or no? That's what they said, and I think you just answered it. It would not go down. Um, the only plan that you offer, the plan you just offered, is to process aliens faster and encourage more to come. Representative John Dingell, Democrat from Michigan, was a master of the yes or no question. During a November 3rd, 2011 House Energy and Commerce Oversight hearing, Representative Dingell did not get an immediate yes or no answer from a witness, so he adopted a strategy. He talked louder. These are yes or no questions. Uh, Council, have you included the minority staff in any and all meetings with members of DOE, OMB, and White House? Yes or no? I'm sorry, sir. Can you repeat that again? I couldn't hear it. Have you included minority staff in any and all meetings with members of DOE, OMB, and White House? Yes or no? Doesn't require a lot of thought, yes or no? Yes, sir. Another purpose for congressional hearings, in the Senate, they are the cornerstone of the confirmation process for executive branch nominees. Here's a yes or no exchange from September 27, 2018. New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker is questioning President Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh. Judge Kavanaugh, um, you drank on weekdays as well in high school, not just weekends. Is that on correct? weekdays? Yes, sir. Uh, I would say that's rare. Are you talking about during the school year? Um, I'm talking about the calendars that you provided during these dates. Oh, that's that's in, the, in the summer after a football workout when we went over to... You drank on weekdays, yes or no, sir? Uh, in the summer, when we went over to Timmy's house... On July 1st, that would indicate yes. Yes, in other words, that, that July 1st reference to skis, went over for skis, that's brewskis, correct? And after Tobin's... Sir, sir, I just need a yes or no. That brewskis, right? Well, I need to explain in context. Uh, you just said, sir, that you drank on weekdays. That's all I was looking for. Well, no, if I may, if, I may uh, ask, if I may ask the next question, sir. Here's another yes or no exchange from the same hearing. This time, Brett Kavanaugh is questioned by Democratic California Senator Kamala Harris. I'm just asking, are you willing to ask the White House to conduct such an investigation? Because as you are aware, the FBI did conduct a background investigation into you yes, before we were aware of these most recent allegations. So are you willing to ask the White House to do that? And say yes or no, and then we can move on. I've had six background investigations over 26 years. Sir, as it relates to the recent allegations, are you willing to have them do it? The, the, the witness testimony is before you, no witness who was there 
supports that I was there. Okay, I'm going to take that as a no and we can move on. Let's do another clip of Senator Kamala Harris demanding a yes or no from a Trump nominee. From a few months before the Kavanaugh hearing, May 9th, 2018, the Senate Intelligence Committee is hearing from Gina Haspel, President Trump's nominee to head the CIA. Do you believe that the previous interrogation techniques were immoral? Senator, I believe that CIA officers to whom you referred... It's a yes or no answer. Do you believe the previous interrogation techniques were immoral? I'm not asking do you believe they were legal. I'm asking do you believe they were immoral? Senator, I believe that CIA did extraordinary work to prevent another attack on this country given the legal tools that we were authorized to use. Please answer yes or no. Do you believe in hindsight that those techniques were immoral? Senator, what I believe sitting here today is that I support the higher moral standard we have decided to hold ourselves to. Can you please answer the question? Senator, I, I think I've answered the question. No, you've not. Do you believe the previous techniques, now armed with hindsight, do you believe they were immoral? Yes or no? Senator, I believe that we should hold ourselves to the moral standard outlined in the Army Field Manual. Okay, so I understand that you're, you've not answered the question, but I'm going to move on. And just like some answers might not cleanly fit into a binary yes or no, sometimes what seems like a question isn't a question at all. We return one more time to the 2019 House Judiciary Committee oversight hearing with President Trump's acting attorney general, Matthew Whitaker. Here's Democratic New York Congressman Hakeem Jeffries. I'm confused. I really am. We're all trying to figure out who are you, where did you come from, and how the heck did you become the head of the Department of Justice? So hopefully you can help me work through this confusion. All right, well, I'm, I mean, Congressman, not... I, I, Mr. Whitaker, that was a statement, not a question. Okay. I am assume you know the difference. Here's another example of mistaking a statement for a question. June 20th, 2014, the House Ways and Means Committee. The witness, IRS Commissioner John Koskinen. The questioner, Republican Representative from Wisconsin, Paul Ryan. Monday, our investigators ask your agency whether any other hard drives crash, and we learned that six other hard drives of the people we're investigating were involved. You didn't tell us that. We told you on Monday. On Monday. And what did you do with the... Because we asked you. Right, and what did you do with that information? You told us on Monday because we asked you whether any other hard drives crash. This is unbelievable. We answered You, you told question. us on May that you were going to give us all of Lois Lerner's emails, and you learned in February that this crashed. I did not learn in February it was a crash, and we you, told you on Monday... We, I'm not asking you a question. I'm making a statement. My, my apologies. You are the Internal Revenue Service. You can reach into the lives of hardworking taxpayers, and with a phone call, an email, or a letter, you can turn their lives upside down. But don't worry. IRS Commissioner Koskinen did get a yes or no question in that 2014 hearing. Here's Ways and Means Committee Chairman Dave Camp, Republican from Michigan. So for the sake of the agency and to restore the trust of the American people, will you support the appointment of a special prosecutor? There are six investigations going on at this event. Yes or no? IG, the IG is already investigating this. Can you give Between, a definitive answer to this committee? Uh, yes or no, do you support the appointment of a special prosecutor? I do. <coughs> I do I'm not. controlling the time. I'm asking a question that can have a simple yes or no answer. I think... I think yeah, regular the, order. I think the appointment of a special prosecutor after the six investigations ongoing and the IG investigation into this matter ongoing would be a monumental waste of taxpayer funds. So is that a yes or a no? That's a no. Thank you. Another purpose of a congressional hearing, collect information to use to draft and improve legislation. An example of yes or no questions for that type of hearing from October 30th, 2013, a House hearing on implementing the Affordable Care Act. Two Kansans are going at it. The witness, former Democratic Kansas governor, then Obama HHS secretary, Kathleen Sebelius. The questioner, Republican congressman from Kansas, Mike Pompeo. To use your words, you say these were, I think you said lousy plans. Ms. Taverner said not true insurance. You think that the plans that were offered when you were the insurance commissioner weren't true insurance? 
In the individual market, the insurance commissioner in Kansas and virtually every place in the country does not have no, regulatory yes, authority yes, over the plans. Mr. Bates, and a lot a yes of them no are questions. not. Were they true insurance plans when you were in the insurance A lot of them are not true insurance plans. No. Thank you. Going back further, November 2, 2007, a House hearing on the banking industry and mortgage foreclosures. The witness from the Bush administration, Assistant Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Brian Montgomery. The questioner, the Democratic Chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Barney Frank. Well, What's now, your answer to the question? Sir, I think we're doing that today. I mean, if, if I'm a lower income, high risk family that cannot use FHA today, if someone says by paying eight or nine dollars more a month. No, Mr. Montgomery, you know, you're FHA, deliberately not answering. I would answering. say, where do I sign up? Mr. Montgomery, please answer my That's question. That's what we're trying to do, sir. No, you're That's not. You're trying, trying to, to avoid it. You know better. Here is the question. Assuming we're going to help people who are of weaker credit, and assuming that that means that somebody has to pay for a higher default rate, should that cost be borne only by all the people in that subcategory of weaker credit, or should that cost be borne by all of those getting it, MIP? It, it's borne by everyone, sir. We no, Mr. Montgomery, please answer the question. Everybody pays premium, sir. Everybody pay, that's the beauty of this program. It's not a handout. Everybody pays premiums. Yes, and Mr. Montgomery, you want to attract some some lower risk borrowers, and all of these are lower income, sir. The average income of our borrower is fifty-five thousand dollars a Mr. year. Mr. Montgomery, you know I we know that. More oh, stop of those types of borrowers. You will stop filibustering. This is appalling. We agree to all of that. We agree that we're going to reach people in Oregon. We're going to stay here till you answer the question, yes or no. It didn't get any quieter for another HUD official in the next Republican administration. President Trump's HUD secretary, Ben Carson, May 21st, 2019, discussing housing policy with the majority Democratic House Financial Services Committee. We'll play two clips from that hearing. First, Ben Carson and Representative David Scott, Democrat of Georgia. Are you all still planning to zero out the budget for the CBDG program? Uh, yes or no? Let me just say... I don't think we ever need to go to battle, regardless of anything. Having said that, you know, as I've said before, the CDB, CDBG program has been helpful in many cases. No, I, I know my time is short, but are, have you moved away from zeroing out that budget, yes or no? It's not a yes or no question. Yes, it is. Uh, you just want to make it into a battle. It doesn't need to no, be No, I want a yes or no answer. You're going to do it or you're not. And second, here's Secretary Ben Carson and Representative Ayanna Presley, Democrat of Massachusetts. And check out Carson switching it up and getting in his own yes or no question. Yes or no. If less left unaddressed, do you believe the substandard public housing conditions pose a risk to tenants' physical, mental, and emotional health? If left unaddressed. Yes or no, can you ask me some questions yourself? You don't get to dictate what my line of stuff. questioning is, reclaiming my time. You're a very smart you man, so you understand the question. Please answer it. The, the, yes or no, the, if left unaddressed, which I believe they are unaddressed because this budget does not reflect the need, do you believe the substandard public housing conditions pose a risk to tenants' physical, mental, and emotional health? Uh, you already know the answer to that. Yes or no. You know the answer. Yes or no. I know the answer. Do you know the answer? Yes or no. Reclaiming my time. You don't get to do that. No. The time belongs to the gentle lady. Some issues discussed in congressional hearings might be complicated. Some might require thoughtful, deliberative, intellectual explanation. But on March 25th, 2021, there didn't seem to be much time for nuance. An Energy and Commerce Subcommittee hearing on combating online misinformation and disinformation. The witnesses were top social media execs, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, Jack Dorsey from Twitter, and the exec we heard at the beginning, Sundar Pichai of Google. Here's Chairman Mike Doyle, Democrat from Pennsylvania. Okay. Gentlemen, my time is short, and I ask that you make your responses as brief and to the point as possible. Uh, if I ask you a yes or no question, I'm just looking for a yes or no, so please respond appropriately. I, I wanna start by asking all three of you um, if your platform bears some responsibility for disseminating disinformation related to the election and the Stop the Steal movement that led to the attack on the Capitol. Just a yes or no answer. Mr. Zuckerberg. 
Chairman, I think our responsibility is to build systems that can help. I just, Mr. Zuckerberg, I just want a yes or no answer, okay? Yes or no, do you, do you bear some responsibility for what happened? Congressman, our responsibility is to make sure that we build effective systems okay, to help fight the Okay, the gentleman's is not to answer the question. Uh, Mr. Pichai, yes or no? Well, we always feel a deep sense of responsibility, but I think we worked hard. Uh, this election effort was one of our most substantive efforts. Is that a yes or a no? Uh, Congressman, it's a complex question. Uh, we Okay, we'll move on. Uh, Mr. Dorsey. Yes, but you also have to take into consideration a broader ecosystem. It's not Thank just about the technology platforms we use. Thank you. Representative Billy Long, a Republican from Missouri, also asked the three tech execs a yes or no question, but his had a twist. It was a yes or no question about yes or no. Mr. Pachai, I'm going to ask you a yes or no question. And uh, just tell me if you know the difference in these two words. Yes and no. Yes. yes. Mr. Zuckerberg, same question for you. Do you know the difference in yes and no? Yes, Congressman. Yes. And Mr. Dorsey, same question for you. Do you know the difference in two words, yes or no? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Yes, yes. I didn't hear know the difference. Okay, thank you. I just, I want a steak dinner there from one of our, my colleagues. They didn't think I could get you all to answer. All three of the answer yes or no question. I did it. Two and a half hours into that five-hour hearing, Twitter's Jack Dorsey tweeted a poll. The poll was just a question mark with the words, yes or no. It got over 100,000 votes. The final tally, yes beat no, 64% to 36%. The poll got noticed by Representative Kathleen Rice, Democrat of New York, who, when it was her turn to ask questions, looked annoyed. Mr. Dorsey, what is winning, yes or no, on your Twitter account poll? Yes. Hmm. Your multitasking skills are quite impressive. In the end, that question about yes or no could not have been answered yes or no. You've heard senators and representatives demand of witnesses speedy yes and no answers. But what's it like to be on the receiving end of that treatment? For the perspective of one person who's gone through the process, we borrow from another C-SPAN podcast, Book Notes Plus, a recent interview with Judy Shelton. President Trump nominated her to serve on the board of the Federal Reserve. Judy Shelton's selection to the board was controversial, and eventually, President Biden's administration withdrew her nomination. But she did go through a Senate confirmation hearing. By the way, you mentioned this earlier, the five-minute rule in the Senate. Watching, we've done it for years. We've been doing this for 43 years. When you watch it, the five-minute rule comes up every time somebody testifies you watch the members begin to push 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 to get an answer quicker 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 i just want a yes or a no what's it feel like sitting in the chair when you know they only have five minutes well i guess you get a little bit um cynical as you get used to it because some of them spend uh four minutes and 40 seconds making a speech that may or may not have much to do with with the issues at hand in terms of of uh, your suitability to serve uh, on the board of governors of the Federal Reserve. Um, uh, some of some of it, I would say, is a form of bullying, which I wouldn't mind if I thought it was honest intellectual discussion. But um, if you're pressed into yes or no, yes or no, without uh, being able to explain your reasoning or given a hypothetical um, that that you first have to wrap your mind around and say, wait, what are you suggesting? Because if you're saying there's this and this, what about this and that? And they're just saying, nope, what would you do? And I thought without context, um, you, you find yourself kind of backing up, backing up. And then the next thing you know, um, there's some pithy statement and it's over. That, that, that was... That was um, demoralizing. And now a bonus clip. Think members of Congress just want yes or no's from witnesses? Well, one time during a hearing, a member of Congress wanted a yes or no answer from a member of Congress. January 12, 2021, the House Rules Committee debated a resolution to remove President Trump from office. Here's Representative Ed Perlmutter, a Democrat from Colorado, and Representative Jim Jordan, 
Republican of Ohio. Isn't it true that Joe Biden won the election? Uh, yes, he's going to be president. Um, and I've, I've never said, as the, as the chairman indicated earlier, I've never said that this election was stolen. What I've said very clearly is Mr. Tr- Mr. Half, the elect- Mr. half the electorate, Jim. half the electorate, both Republicans Jim. and Democrats have concerns and we have called the- for an investigation. Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan, it was a simple question. Isn't it true Joe Biden won the election? Yes or no? Yes, he won. I mean, I, I don't know how many times yes. I have to say it. Okay. Yes, he won, but there are serious problems with this election that deserve an investigation, and that's what I've called for. And it's not just Republicans who think that. Okay. Countless number of Democrats think that this thing had problems, too. We Mr. called for Jordan. an investigation, but Mr. you guys Jordan. don't want to do it. No investigation. Mr. Jordan. End of story. No, no, never Mr. mind Jordan. the fact that a third of the... Well, when you ask me a question, i got to give an answer. I didn't. Never mind I asked you a yes or no. I asked you a yes or no questions. Please. We're trying to bring this nation okay. back together. Jim, geez. That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. Now we're running out of time. So, yes or no, can you do your own searches in the C-SPAN video library? Yes. Do you simply go to cspan.org and use that happy search bar on top? Yes. Is it free, easy, and loads of fun? Yes, yes, yes. See, it's not that hard to answer yes or no questions after all. Thanks for listening and happy searching.